So when someone asks, is genomics leading the way, genomics is simply a discovery tool. Discovery is the first stage in providing a solution. So then comes translation. What do you do with all the information? How is it interpreted? How can it be utilized? What are you going for? What can you find in it? That becomes the translational piece. Post that is scale. So it's, it's a series of steps. And I don't think you can have one without the other. If we look at breeding in the past, sometimes in complex cultivars, it would take a decade in trees, 15 years to make a decision. Now those decisions can be made much quicker. We can have a conversation about resilience, about drought tolerance, about water use efficiency, about nutrient use efficiency, about uh, nutrient content in a way that we never could have before. You couldn't do it without genomics. And remember, genomics is this field which is constantly changing. First there was just genomics, then there was proteomics, transcriptomics, and there's a world of omics coming, catabolomics, microbiomics. All of this is just information. Information to be utilized. Constantly it allows you also to check your progress, which is important. People think it's just a tool to start with, but it's a tool that's used in every single step of a breeder's toolbox. Why would any breeder turn down another tool if it helps make a better decision? And that's the role of genomics with breeding. There's breeding, there's genomics. The future is the integrated breeding platform that takes every bit of information that we can gather. I want satellite data so I can start to know what's going on in the field. I want soil science. If I leave anything out, then I make a decision that is only half complete. And I want to make complete decisions and help feed the world. So one of the most expensive things in any place, whether it's where I'm based in the University of California, Davis, or here at ICRASAT, is the equipment and the updating, constant updating of equipment. So every CG center does not need a packed bioscience sequencer. They don't need to have rooms full of aluminum sequencers. We need to make collaborations with those places that share the same value and have them do some of the work because as a service industry, they're constantly updating their equipment to be efficient. So do we need telescopes like the giant Keck telescope to look at the stars? We, we don't need one everywhere. We need a few of those that are utilized well. So do we build centers of excellence, like an ICRASAT, like an ICRAF, like an IITA, like a Bioversity? Do we pick out some of these pieces and make sure that we have that ability? Or is it more important to be trained to know how to use that ability to translate it? And that's one of the questions the CG has to come to grips with. Not everywhere will be equal. But you have a soil lab in Nairobi at uh, ICRAF that is the most advanced soil lab in the world. Do we need another dozen of those? I don't think so. We just need how to know how to use that and share that information uh, in a lateral manner, not just only in a vertical manner for the old, a singular institution. Well, $100 is hardly enough to even buy a reagent, or you couldn't even buy a chip. So if I had $100, I don't, I don't think it's the right question what I would do. $50 in genomics and $50 in traditional plant breeding. We need so much help getting plant breeders the information they need. Without that set of information, without that detail encyclopedia of, of this particular uh, chromosome, we have found drought resistance. On this one, we found disease resistance. On this one is water nu uh, and nutrient use efficiency. You need to have that because we need to have breeders that are smarter than they were when I was trained. We would go out in the field and look at tens of thousands of plants and walk the field with a, a board giving it a odd number rating nine, seven, five, or three, and we would walk very fast, and we would look around, and supposedly we made good decisions. Those decisions were actually fairly, uh, how would I put it, not as good as we thought. 
So there's tools that one can use which make that decision empirical. So it's not just looking. Phenotype is not the end of the world looking. A good person could choose what looks better, what looks worse. A maize plant or a chickpea plant that is growing in a drought-stricken area with saline soils can tell which ones are robust or not. When things are good, it's a little bit more difficult to tell the subtlety because everything looks good. So what do we need? We need both. Again, my perspective is, who do you collaborate with? Who becomes your partner? If you're in Africa, is there a coalition or a collaboration that could happen so that you don't have to have everything in-house? In India, is it the case? Can we see the advantage of collaboration in a way we've never seen before? That will be the hallmark of the future. I don't want to have bricks and mortar. I want to have soil that's enriched. I want to have plants that are growing. And I want to deliver nutrition. And that should be the goal of the whole CG system. If I was taking a crop that was an orphan crop and starting at zero, it's probably no less than five years and no more than seven years if it's an annual crop. We're not talking about a tree, but an annual crop between five and seven years. If you do a really good job and you have really talented people, maybe three years. But three years is the proof of concept where you then have to go and produce seeds or root stocks or cuttings, and that might take a year or two before it be, can be made into scale. Farmers will do the rest, and small seed companies.